Hey guys, welcome to Code Part Time. In this video, we will see what's inside the computer and how does the computer work. Most of us have heard of the famous fairy tale of Snow White. The queen, being jealous of Princess Snow White's beauty, plots to kill her. The evil queen had a magic mirror to which she always asked who is the fairest in the land. The magic mirror with its powerful knowledge truthfully answered every time. If we think about it, the magic mirror is exactly like a computer. It listens to the queen's question, reaches into its store of knowledge and answers her immediately. A computer in the same way will listen to its user by accepting an instruction. This is so called providing an input. Input can be given to a computer in a variety of ways. We can either do this by typing them on a keyboard, clicking on something on the screen using a mouse or speaking through a microphone and some other ways too. So devices through which we can give instructions to the computer or interact with it are called input devices. Remember magic mirror spoke back to the queen? The computer can do that too using its speakers. But usually it will display its answer or results back to us by displaying it on the screen or by executing the command given to it. This is called the output of the computer. Hence devices which are used to share output with the user are called output devices. In between the input and output, there is the crucial step of processing. This is where the magic happens. Processing takes place in the central processing unit or the CPU. The CPU uses the instructions given to it by the user along with the stored instructions in its memory to give a result. We could say that the CPU along with the memory units make up the processing stage in the working of a computer. Components of the processing stage look something like this. The CPU is the main component of the computer that performs calculations, actions and run programs. It is called the brain of the computer. The CPU consists of the control unit, the arithmetical and the logical unit. The ALU performs all the calculations and logical operations of the computer, manipulating numbers in a structured and purposeful way. As we have learned, computers understand instructions in combinations of zeros and ones. Since everything is expressed in numbers, the arithmetic and logical unit becomes crucial. Next up is the control unit. The control unit directs and controls the operation of the processor. It constantly communicates with the arithmetical and logical unit, the memory and the input-output devices telling them what to do. The control unit reads and interprets instructions. It controls information flow from various devices of the computer and regulates the timing of the processor's working. This little beauty handles multiple tasks of fetching, decoding, executing and storing results and is obviously indispensable to the working of a computer. Now we know where the computer keeps its brain. Now we will see where it keeps its knowledge. There are two kinds of memory in a computer primary memory and secondary memory. The secondary storage is the unit where all the computer's data and instructions are stored. This is the permanent memory containing data and programs. It is rewritable. There is another memory called ROM, read-only memory, where essential instructions related to the startup of the computer and other vital functions are stored. It's not rewritable. From the ROM and the storage, everything required for immediate use is copied and stored in the memory section. This memory is temporary and is called the RAM, random access memory. So RAM and ROM are the primary memory. Now let's take an example. Let's retrace our steps to a few minutes ago. When you turned your attention to your device and clicked on the thumbnail to open this video, what was just a click or a tap for you meant a whole lot more to your computer or your mobile phone. Once you clicked on the thumbnail, your job was done. From here onwards, your computer took over. The input device of your machine registered a click and sent the information along with the location of the click to the processor. The processor referred to its memory to check which program's part is represented by the little picture that is thumbnail in that section of the screen. It then found the name of the video and loaded it to the temporary memory by downloading chunks of data from the internet. Post that, it read and interpreted the code for this application in which you are viewing this video on. Then it followed the instructions telling it how to display the video, images and text on your screen to represent the opened video. All this happened within a few seconds in the wonderful device that is your computer or your mobile phone. That brings us to the end of another unit. Ok, let's revise. The components of the CPU are arithmetical and logical unit, control unit and memory. The CPU is the brain of the computer. RAM stands for random access memory. ROM stands for read only memory. The two types of memory in a computer are primary and secondary. RAM and ROM form part of the primary memory. The secondary memory is the permanent memory. Input devices enable the user to provide instructions to the computer. Output devices enable the user to get results or answers from the computer. Now we know what the term information technology means, what computers are 
and how they were developed over the years and what's inside them. We have also learned how computers function. Now we need to look at these machines at a deeper level to understand them even better. In the next video, we will take a closer look into what's inside the computers like the CPU and the computer storage. See you guys in the next video. Have a nice time. Take care. Stay safe. And thank you.